The latest film adaptation from horror master Stephen King features a very hot up and coming young actress. Uh, you can see her on Showtime's Yellow Jackets currently, Sophie Thatcher. Let's talk about The Boogeyman. Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new film, The Boogeyman. This is in theaters right now. It is an adaptation of uh, an old Stephen King short story from the 70s. It was uh, collected in one of his uh, short story collections called Night Shift. That also included uh, Children of the Corn and Trucks, which became Maximum Overdrive and Cat's Eye. So there have already been uh, quite a few adaptations from uh, this book, but I guess this is the first one uh, of The Boogeyman. There have been movies in the past with the same, same title and obviously about The Boogeyman, but uh, this is the first one, I guess, uh, from that Stephen King work. So before we launch into the specifics of the film, I want to welcome you into the Amber Reviews. Thank you for finding this video. We've got uh, a bunch of great TV and movie reviews for you to check out. Uh, try to post something new just about every day. So please consider subscribing down below. Maybe even hit that notification bell as well uh, so you can be alerted when my new videos drop. If not, uh, if you don't want to do that, you can go ahead and just like this video, comment below, uh, share it on your socials. All that stuff does help the channel out. All right, let's talk about The Boogeyman. Uh, so Sophie Thatcher is uh, sort of the lead girl in this, you know, this is kind of a, one of these family horror movies um, with uh, Chris Messina playing the father. We just recently saw him in uh, the Michael Jordan biopic, Air. But uh, Sophie Thatcher uh, on Yellow Jackets, you know her as the young version of the Juliette Lewis character on there. So she's definitely making a name for herself, um, and I think she does a great job here. Not to get into the review portion of this early, but, um, you know, I, I think she has a bright career ahead of her. So uh, th the basic plot here is uh, that this family has has just recently lost their matriarch. Um, so, you know, the, the, the two girls, uh, Sadie and Sawyer, uh, Sawyer here is played by uh, Vivian uh, Lyra Blair. Don't think she's any relation to uh, Linda Blair from The Exorcist, but, you know, who, who knows? Maybe. Uh, maybe maybe the granddaughter or something. But uh, in any event, they are, you know, both trying to deal with the death of their mother. Um, and, you know, their father, Will, has his own issues uh, dealing with it. He is a therapist, uh, you know, in his own right. But he's, you know, having trouble coming to terms with the loss of his wife. Um, a, a desperate patient unexpectedly shows up at his office and leaves behind a terrifying supernatural entity known as the Boogeyman. Uh, and then the, the story goes from there. So uh, this is sort of just the latest in a long line of, um, you know, kind of trauma horror movies um, where, you know, somebody's, uh, you know, loss of a loved one or, you know, severe trauma is, um, you know, perhaps manifesting itself. And so nobody believes them. Oh, that's just the trauma talking, you know, whatever. We've seen it uh, really a, a lot lately. Um, and, and I will admit, since this is, you know, from a, a short story in the 70s, I don't know if that kind of stuff was in the original short story. I've never read it. Um, my guess would be no, that uh, perhaps that was kind of added for flavoring um, because it is kind of the, the, the hot item uh, du jour in the horror world. Um, Smile is, you know, a, a really good recent example of that. Um, so here, look, uh, there are some, some good things about this movie, uh, and some bad things. I'm not sure which direction we should go in first. Let, let's, let's talk about the bad first and then we'll, we'll end on some brighter notes, right? Um, so this is, uh, rather generic for a horror movie. Um, you know, there, there's not a lot here that we haven't seen before. And there are some, you know, pockets of, of waiting for horror things to happen, some, some scary things. Um, but I didn't actually necessarily mind that part. I think if you are in it just for, you know, the, the scare factor, this may be one, uh, to avoid because it does, I think maybe drag in a couple of small spots. Did It didn't personally for me, but I think if you're all about the, the scary factor of these kind of movies, you know, maybe that will uh, affect you a little more than it did me. But in that vein, one of the worst things about this movie is its constant use of jump scares. I, I talk about this, um, you know, a lot uh, when I review horror movies. I, I think it's lazy. I think it's cheap. And yeah, it does. It does get me, you know, gets my heart pumping. It, you know, gets me to jump out of my seat or whatever sometimes. But uh, I think it's cheap, you know, okay, great. You know, you've raised the volume, you know, 200%. Uh, and, and when somebody drops a dish or something, it's, it's just a cheap, lazy way to get scares. I, I prefer 
for the story to do that and maybe some of the creature designs and, and some other things. So I, I think this movie relies way too heavily on that. Uh, this is directed by a, a gentleman I'm not real familiar with. I, I looked up the, the few films he's done. I didn't really know any of them, but his name is Rob Savage. Um, and, and so, you know, maybe, uh, there, there's a better horror movie for him down the line. Um, so that's, that's really the worst of it. It's just kind of generic. It's, you know, there's nothing necessarily horrible about the movie, I would say, but, uh, it's just a, a lot of things we've seen before and, and certainly leaning on that, uh, you know, trauma trope of late, uh, with the horror movies. So on to the good. Uh, I, I think the acting here is, is really, really great, um, for, for this type of movie. You know, when you, we think of horror movies, um, uh, you know, especially ones with kind of smaller budgets and stuff, we don't necessarily think of great acting, but, uh, getting Sophie Turner, I think, or, uh, Sophie Turner, Sophie Thatcher, um, was a, a smart play because people are watching her in yellow jackets, which in itself has some, you know, real creepy vibes, uh, going on. Um, so I think she fit in here very well. Um, Chris Messina as the dad, uh, you know, I, we've seen him do a lot of different things lately. I mean, I, he first came to my attention in the Mindy project, which is, you know, a comedy then, you know, his, his character is a little comedic in air, but you know, that's, that's more dramatic. And then here, um, I think he actually holds holds uh, the, the family storyline together quite well uh, as the dad. So really enjoyed that. Um, and then the creature design of uh, the Boogeyman is okay, um, but it does lead me into another negative, which is um, that the uh, the character himself, the, the Boogeyman, the rules are very inconsistent. I was never quite sure how he was doing certain things and they seem to contradict each other a little bit or, or, or leave us with plot holes of how he's maybe getting from, from location to location. Uh, you know, so that I was like, not, not totally on board with. Um, but you know, going back to the positive and, and in terms of this, uh, this guy's directing Rob uh, Savage, um, the, the lighting, and this is another thing I talk about a lot with not just horror movies, but um, superhero movies have had issues with this lately, um, like the Batman and, and the second Black Panther movie. Um, uh, you know, if there's a scene in absolute darkness, I still need to be able to see as the audience member what's going on. If the if the character can't see, OK, that's one thing. But I think we'll understand the character is having trouble seeing if it's a dark room, um, you know, if the, if the lights are all shut out or there's a blackout or whatever. And uh, this is something that uh, horror movies have struggled with in, in many, many, the last many, many years, I would say. Um, but here there's a few scenes uh, where they're in a completely darkened room or, um, you know, there there are little flashes of light. At one point, one of the characters has sort of uh, like Christmas lights draped around her. Uh, you know, it was it was clever. It worked. Um, and I was able to see everything. So I, I do like that. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely some positives and some negatives here. But I think the bottom line for this one is it is just kind of rather generic. Um, yeah, some scares for sure. But, um, you know, everything else is so sort of uh, by the numbers here. Nothing necessarily new, I would say. As Stephen King adaptations go, it's probably middle of the road, I guess. I, I certainly have not seen all of them. Um, you know, that's for sure. But uh, I leave The Boogeyman with a C. I, I think, you know, it's it's a very middling horror movie, but perhaps elevated by some good performances. I could maybe be talked up to a C plus or something, but I'll leave it with a C for now. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye.